Today we are going to be focused on my favorite part of the build and that is the drawer system that I have underneath the bed itself. I have got so much use out of this and I can't wait to show you guys how I built it. So in the last video, what we accomplished was building a floor for our truck cap camper and we also built the initial bed structure. And of course, in this section of the build, we are gonna be focused on building this awesome drawer system. And this drawer system is gonna have one large pullout that's gonna have a huge chest storage within it. But below that, we're also gonna have this pullout and that's gonna act as an extra working surface, a cutting board, you name it. I found so many uses for this. Also in this video, we're gonna cover a couple more things. We are gonna build some more support for the bed structure. And lastly, we are gonna make a topper for our bed and add a couple large chest storages within it. So let's jump right into the video and see how we did this. So the drawer system was probably one of the harder things that I had to do. So when you guys take this on yourself, of course you're all gonna have different measurements for the drawer that you want to accomplish. And one of the easier ways that I found to do this was just to visit a website. And once you're on that page, it's so simple. So you're just going to put in what height, width, and depth of your drawer system that you want to make. Uh, put in the width of your material. I used three-fourths of an inch plywood. And since we're using that Craig pocket hole drill system, we're going to want these joints to be butt joints. Plug that in and the website spits out all of the cuts that you need to make. So it's just a really easy system. You don't have to think about it a whole lot and uh, you have exactly what you need to do. With that accomplished, I set out to rough cut everything to size and get ready to build this drawer. Now don't forget, because we are making an extra slide out from this drawer system, you are gonna wanna cut a little extra space off of the face measurement that they that website spit out for you. And that way we're gonna have some room to install some guides as well as that pullout board itself. Now with that done, we are gonna drill some pocket holes in this, get it all together and move on to the next step. There we go, my very first drawer and my very first little pullout cutting board slash cooking surface that I'm gonna use a lot for catch and cooks. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and it's gonna be a great surface to use while I'm cooking. As far as this goes, I may put a flat surface on the top just by recessing these sides a bit and having something that can kind of slide over it. That way I can set things here while I'm cooking, uh, maybe put some ingredients up there and whatnot. But yeah, this worked out better than I expected. So the hardest part of all of this for me was installing it. My initial plan was to put in four drawer slides, but I struggled to line these up properly and decided that that was not the way to go. 
So I ended up putting two in and these are rated for a hundred pounds. And so I installed that and it worked perfectly fine. And I've had it like this for over a year now. So here's the results. I am so happy with how this turned out. And of course you guys can build this in any dimension that you want. You can add two sliders. You could add a slider off of the side, get creative with it. So this whole structure is gonna be held in by friction. Uh, so we have an exact cut of the floor that's gonna help hold it in place. Of course, the weight of everything that's holding it down. And now we're gonna move on and do some supports off to the side that are gonna help prevent it from wiggling. And it's also gonna just help hold it in place a little more. What I did is I just cut out some cardboard, made that an exact cut. And then I could take that back, cut out an exact piece of plywood to fit it perfectly. Now, of course, if you have a jigsaw, that's definitely what you're gonna to wanna to use for this cut, but I, I didn't. So I used a combination of a saw along with a Dremel and a sander to make sure that it was a perfect fit. If you had a jigsaw, this would be a nice easy cut, but that's, that doesn't matter. I mean, no matter what you wanna do, there's always a way to do it. Whether or not it's the fastest way, um, you can still get it done. So yeah, let's see if this fits. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna keep sanding the dimensions till they do. Fits like a glove. That is probably the most accurate cut I've made this whole time. <laughs> all right, so I got the struts all made out and the support beams and now I'm just gonna throw them in. Well, that's done. So now with those, I can basically just finish the top platform and this whole thing will be, at least the bed portion will be wrapped up in a couple drawers, or not drawers, but like chests where I'm sitting. And then call it good for now. And I got the measurements from the back of my truck. Let's see, I wrote it down. So it's gonna be 73 and 3 fourths by 43 and 3 fourths. Uh, so this is basically the last major cut I need to make for that side of the truck. Uh, so I'm just going to drop that pallet down, rough cut it to size, and then I'm going to go in and I don't know if I'm going to trace it out or maybe line it up and get a good idea of uh, what sections I need to cut out. The final top of the bed structure is cut out to rough shape. So I'm just going to show you guys what I'm going to do next. I do have to fix some leaks, so temporarily I just have a tarp over it because the next few days it's gonna be mixing of snow like it is now and into rain. It's really not that big a deal. A couple gaskets in here, uh, they're, they're a little bit old. I got another one on that back window. But anyway, I just wanted to go over the system I'm using to mark out the gaps and what I need to cut out and what I can leave. Just because uh, I had no idea what I was doing at first, but I, I kind of like this system I just started using. Um, so basically what I do is I just marked out on my, my ruler exactly where the back of this meets this lip. And then basically I go along and just probe the back until I find where this line has started to uh, come onto the board, at which case I will just mark that out as a spot I need to cut. So now, if you had a jigsaw, you could just basically cut along this line, make it really quick and simple. Unfortunately, that process is gonna take me a bit longer, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna happen in the end, and there, there's always a way. So I'm gonna get started on that, and I'll show you guys how it worked out when I'm done. There we have it. So it fit pretty great. We have a little bit of overlap, that I will trim off, but other than that, I mean, everything fits in really, really great. Pretty tight fit all throughout. Okay, top's fixed, trimmed up the edges. Eventually I'll screw it down, but it sits pretty flush. So now that we have the top finished, there is one last thing I want to do today. If you look at it this way, so this would be the front. This is our drawer system. 
This, I have sketched out what is gonna be a basically an opening chest, and then here as well. These are gonna open up essentially, if that makes sense, but. And there we go. So they work perfectly. We're able to access these absolutely giant storages in the bottom. The last suggestion I would make is add some drawer supports to this. So that way when you open it up, it's going to stay open and you don't have to hold it open with one hand, especially once you have the mattress on top of that, it becomes more of a pain. Trust me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you go down below and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to show you the third and final section of this build coming up next Monday. I'll see you guys then.